here tonight uh, to uh, present Friday Night Fire. This is Behold the Lamb Ministries International. I'm Pastor Gregory Baptiste, where we changing lives one life at a time. Uh, this is a kingdom ministry, and so we're excited. We know that in religion, you serve your pastor, but in the kingdom, the pastor serves you. We're here tonight to present the leadership of Behold the Lamb Ministries, who's going to be speaking to you about going through a crisis and coming out of one. Uh, I want you to tune in, uh, get your notepads and your pens. Uh, God's going to speak to you from heaven, and so we're excited about what's going to happen tonight. Remember, this is BTL, or Behold the Lamb Ministries International, where we're changing lives one life at a time. Uh, first brother that's coming up is going to be David Bruce, so he's coming to bring a word straight from heaven. God bless you. Amen. Enjoy the message. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you for that introduction, Pastor. Thank you for this opportunity. I'd like to thank everyone who tuned in to hear this word. We got uh, four of us speaking, and I'm going to open. And uh, I just want to open with a prayer that we invite the Holy Spirit to be here, that he, that he uh, will, will orchestrate this whole uh, Friday night fire so that we, we can get a word, Father God, from you. We know that we need a word from God so we're going through this time, troubled times that we have. So, Father God, we just ask that you, Father God, reign and rule and reside here, even now tonight, Father God, over us. And even every word spoken, Father God, let it be anointed by, your, by, by you, oh Father God, that it touch someone's heart and bless someone's life. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, I've, I've had opportunities to go to you know, to come and come out of some troubled times in my life. And in doing so, you know, I, re I can remember most of the times that I was had crisis in my life was of my own making. A lot of it was of my own thinking and my own belief systems. You know, you know, one thing I know that I need to come through, to go through a crisis is trust. You know, and, and, and in order for me to trust, I have to have a well-placed trust. You know, and that trust has to be in God. You know, it says, in order for me to trust, I have to be faithful. You know, trusting is a part of being faithful. And today, right, I understand what faithful is. Today, I understand that, guess what, in order for me to be faithful, I have to have some word. You know, I got to come through this with God, help. You know, that I'm, if I'm going to be better coming out than going in. Amen. So as I go into this word, you know, one word I want to point out, and that word is hope. And hope is just a positive expectation, a positive expectation for the future. So as I speak about trusting God and going through a crisis and coming out of a crisis, I want to speak to you about the word hope, that positive expectation. You know, in Romans 15, and three, it says that, in 15 and four, it says this, that everything that was written in the past was written to teach us that we may teach and learn the endurance, endurance and that we may have encouragement and hope. You know, hope is essential. And I've heard it sir, it said that you can live seven days with, without food. You know, even three days without water. You know, some people can hold their breath for three minutes and still live. Most of us will die. But not a moment can anyone live without hope. That's exactly right. Without hope. Life is not worth living. So, you know, I just want to dive into the word and see what the Bible says about hope. Because it's hope like none other that the Bible speaks. Abraham had a hope that was against all hope. Yes, Romans 7, 4 and 18 says that Abraham hoped against all hope. Yes. Because even that knowing that his body was dead yes. and that Sarah's womb was dead, that he still had belief in God's word that told him that he would be the father of many nations. Yes, and he held on to that. And that was a hope that didn't disappoint. That's right. See, that's they right. said, Proverbs 12, 13 and 12 says that 
Hope deferred makes the heart sad. That's right. It does, right? But a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. Amen. Come on, brother. You know, uh, <laughs> so as I'm as I'm I'm like talking about hope, you know, it there is a hope that is beyond human understanding. There is a hope that can't, can't be comprehended. It's a hope in things unseen. Matter of fact, the definition of faith has the word hope. Hope is be confident in the things that is unseen. You know, hope, that is the hope that we have in Christ Jesus. And it is in Christ Jesus that I place my hope and not be disappointed. Because his love was shed through me, is shed abroad through hope. You know, I have to have a word also to encourage someone else. Because God has comforted me through times of crisis in my life. And that word of God was with me. And that word of God can come through me now with the evidence that God's word is true. That God keeps his promises. And all his promises are yes. So as we study hope, you know, I want to uh, go to a favorite scripture of mine. Jeremiah 29.11. Jeremiah sends message to couriers. To the captives that were in Babylon. They were taken seeds from Jerusalem and taken into captivity. Now other prophets said that two years God would break the whole of Babylonian empire and that they would be free. But Jeremiah told them it's not going to be that way. See a lot of times when we're going through crisis we want it to be over right away. Yes sir. You know but God is going to see us through in the time that it takes for us to learn what he has for us. Because God has something important for us to learn in this time of crisis. So here it is. He says to them that they ought to make themselves home in the land of captivity. They ought to do all the things that they were told to do before. Be fruitful and multiply. Give your daughters away in marriage and your sons in marriage and let them produce. Plant vineyards and be successful, be prosperous in the land of your captivity. So we're in a wilderness time right now, and we don't recognize it. We're in a wilderness before COVID-19, we were in a wilderness situation. You know, every situation could be a crisis without hope. Every situation in my life, oh, Lord, we're out of milk. It's a crisis. <laughs> well, you know what? It's all in my mind and of my own making. Yes, it is. Of my own making. But with hope, there's no crisis for me and for those who are with me in believing God is true to his promise. So I'm going to skip right ahead to Romans uh, Romans uh, 8, right? And he speaks about hope. And this is what it says about the hope that we have. You know, it says, uh, the mind... Let's see. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the spirit. Indeed, the spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the spirit gives life. Because of righteousness. That's God's righteousness. And if the spirit is in him. Who raised Jesus from the dead. Is living in you. He who raised Christ from the dead. Will also give life. To your mortal bodies. Because of the spirit. Who lives in you. Okay. So he's speaking of. The truth that we believe. The righteousness that we have. That's in on, only in Christ. And he's speaking about, to brothers and sisters, he's speaking to us today. He's speaking to us today with a word of hope. You know, he says, uh, let's see, present suffering. Let me move along uh, at 12 minutes. He says, the hope that we have, uh, let's see, verse, uh, it's a new Bible for me. Verse eight, 18. Consider that our present sufferings 
are not worth comparing to the glory that will be revealed in us. Amen. You know, for the cre creation waits for the expectation for the children to be revealed. For the creation is subject to frustration, and not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subject it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from bondage of decay and brought and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. That is a hope for us. Amen. That is a hope for us. Yes, but sir. I want to move right along because it's a lot more to be said about hope. And in conclusion, to be said about hope. See, hope is that positive expectation of the future. And we can't have that positive expectation of a future without a vision of the promise of God. Yes, you know, when we put a puzzle together, the only thing we reference we have is the box, picture on the box. Mm -hmm. And so, you know what? We need to see a picture of what God has for us. And this is the picture. He says that, he says that in verse 29, it says, that, well, 28, he says, all things, we know that all things work for the good. Yes. Of those who are, who love God and who are called according to his purpose. He says that, for who, for God, verse 29, for, for, for those God foreknew, he also predestined, and to be conformed into the image of the Son. In the image of the Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. You see, God is doing something. And what he is doing, he's removing that flesh man, and he's creating that man of spirit. And that's God's purpose for each one of us, that we be a little less of the flesh and a little bit more of the spirit. Mm -hmm. I want to thank y'all for this time that I have to, to share the word of God with y'all. And, and this is my time. Thank Amen. you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. That was David Bruce, Minister David Bruce, and thank God for hope. You know, the Bible said glory and tribulation for tribulation were patience, patience, experience, experience, hope, and hope making us not to be ashamed because the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Amen. You got to have hope. Amen. We can't live two seconds without hope. Amen. Now we got Brother Calvin Levy coming. He's going to speak a word to you. Be encouraged as we go through our our program, I, I believe God's going to speak to you. Just sit there and, and be open to receive what God has to say to you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. <clears throat> Thank you tonight. I thought I was coming third, but uh, I, I got pushed up. Uh, when Greg asked me to come and minister, of course, you immediately start uh, seeking God about what you want to, what you think God is saying to you. And uh, I had something planned up until last night in prayer, and God gave me something last night, well, really early this morning. It comes out of Luke, the sixth chapter. And what I want to talk about is something that's going on today in the body of Christ. Because you see, people die, but spirits don't. Amen. Amen. And right now, we're going through a time, no... We've never been this way before, but we do have examples of how we should conduct ourselves in a time such as this. But in Luke, the sixth chapter, I want to talk to you about this because we have come obsessed. Some, some of our people have come obsessed with saving America. <clears throat> So in the sixth chapter of Luke, it says, Now it happened on the second Sabbath, after the first, that he went through the grain fields, and his disciples plucked heads of grain, and they ate them, rubbing them in their hands. And some of the Pharisees said, Why are you doing this? What is not lawful to do on the Sabbath? And Jesus went on to explain to them. You see, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the religious leader, they was in love with the Sabbath. They had, sometimes we can lose our way, but they have fell so in love with the Sabbath, they have forgot to minister to people. Mm. And today you got people who's obsessed with saving America and we forgot 
that we should supposed to be ministering to people. That's right. We supposed to be God is more interested in saving souls than He is in in in, in trying to save America. Come on, tell the truth. Or make America great. Right. Yeah, and on, some of our truth. evangelicals mm -hmm. has got caught up in this spirit. Yes. Now we have been exposed to the light, but some of us are following the blind man. I know it's controversial, but I have to say it because we walk in the light and we are here to save souls through love. Yes. And Jesus was criticized. Why? Because he went with the publicans. Because he went and touched the prostitutes. Because he went and touched the sinners. But those are the ones that responded to his ministry. But the religious leader, they just kept on worrying about the Sabbath. Why are you doing these things? And look like Jesus intentionally healed on the Sabbath. Yes, he did. Because in the more he healed, they was not concerned about those folk. I remember a lady that had been bent over. Amen. And they was concerned about what you did on the Sabbath. And he said, well, this lady, she, she's a daughter of Abraham. That's right. Amen. I mean, you know, she's been bent over all these years. Mm -hmm. I remember the guy that, that had been sitting by the pool for 38 years. But well, man, they wasn't concerned about that. <laughs> they was concerned that. about who told you to pick up that bed. Yes. It's the Sabbath. Yes. Oh, they love the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. But we got to fall out of love with America to fall in love with them again back with the Lord. Yes. Oh, yes. Because we are here to be a light. That's it. And I've been driving cab for 30 years. And of course, I listen to 89.1. And it's on, a Christian boy. station. Come on, cab. Yeah. And a lot of people yeah. that get in my cab, they automatically assume that I'm a Trumpian. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I'm a Jesus man. Amen. Amen. So, and when I say that, listen. I cannot, I got to walk in the light. I cannot stand by it because I'm here to show love, to show compassion, and that's what my master showed. You got to cross the lines. We got to go to the hurt, to the loss. One of them told Jesus, there's six days you can come and be healed. But why are you doing this on a Sabbath? Listen, we got to realize who who we are, some of us have lost our way. Yes. Come on, come on, come on. I'm talking about those who have been exposed to the light. Yes. Some of us have lost our way. Mm -hmm. And when you lost your, your way, you don't know you lost your way. Mm -hmm. But we have to come back to the scripture. Because my master said, you will know them by their fruits. But I just want to read this. And he goes on. And said, now in the, in the sixth chapter, he said, now it happened on another Sabbath that he entered the synagogue and taught. And the man was there whose right hand was with <coughs> So the scribes, that's the sixth chapter, the sixth verse. And a man was there whose right hand was with it, and the scribes and the Pharisees watched him closely to see whether he would heal on the Sabbath, that they may find an accusation against him. But he knew their thoughts and said to the man, who had the withered hand, arise and stand here. And he rose and stood, and then Jesus said to them, I will ask you one thing. Is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil, to save or to destroy? And when he had looked around at them all, he said to the man, stretch out your hand. And he did so, and his hand was restored as the other. But they were filled with rage and discussed with one another what they might do to Jesus. I'm simply saying you got to spend more time in prayer. Amen. Mm -hmm. yes. You got to spend more time with the Lord. Because it's, it, it's just, I, I just don't understand. And I, I talk to people all the time. And a lot of times, I, I stay to myself when I'm driving. But if folk Act, then I, I'm obligated to speak the truth. Yes, you are. Amen. Amen. Bro. And I speak the truth in love. I'm not angry, and I can and I can disagree with you, and I'm not and I'm not mad at you, but I, I'm obligated to speak the truth in love 
and I back it up with scripture. So, again, when I, I wanted to, I really wanted to go in another direction until this morning, and the Lord gave me this. Amen. 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 And I said, Lord, you see, I, I, a lot of folk, and I, I talked to them. I got great respect for them. How could we, who walk in the light, follow someone who's in, in the dark? Oh. About so many things. Listen, we cannot legislate morality. That's personal. Mm -hmm. I'm not a liberal. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, you, you can't put these labels. You can't, you can't let folk label you. Whether you're a liberal, you're conservative, you're a Shia, you're a Muslim, you're, you're, you're a Democrat, Republican. Man, we are truly been set free and independent. Yes. Oh. If you ever want to, I know I live, the brothers I'm around, they're more, they're more conservative than the conservative folk. I, 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 you know, I honestly tell the folk, I say, listen, man, this, the way I look at it, if you want to be honest, man, Democrats are overt sinners and the, and, the, and the Republicans are covert sinners. But it's, we all come out the same. You know, I mean, some folk hide it and they're doing the same thing. But other folk out in the open. Listen, we all got to come to the same knowledge of the truth. That's true. And we got we we are obligated. Jesus crossed that line, and they and they they want they crucified. Why? Because he continually to go after. That's why the sinners responded to him. If if folk ain't responded, that means man, the anointing ain't there. There's no love there. I respond because what is the love of God that leads a man to repentance? Amen. Amen. It's the love of Christ. And it's the love that I responded to because some people hard are so hard. They're hard that they're not responding to anything else but the love of Christ. So I've said it, and I know it's controversial, and, and, and hey, I can speak with anybody on the subject. I'm not angry with you at all. But I have to say that there, we are obligated by the word. Hey, you got folk are obsessed with this country. And you forget that we are here. God is into saving souls. Not just America. Amen. Amen. He's into saving souls. Yes. yes. All kinds of souls. From all backgrounds. Amen. I can speak to anybody. Yeah, he he just is, is the homosexual or the fornicator. Sin is sin. And when you sin against your own body, we know that. God say, hey, he doesn't sin against his own body. And commits sexual sin, sins against his own body. But again, all I'm saying is this. Let's speak the truth in love. Amen? Amen. I'm good? No. Amen. I just, I just wanted to say that. I felt that what was in my spirit. That's what God placed in my spirit. Amen. That we are, and we have to exercise. We listen. That's why they got a curse. Exercise your right to vote. If you don't do anything, exercise that right. Nobody got to know who you vote for. I'm not mad at anybody. You, you got a right to vote for <laughs> yes. whoever you feel vote that you want to vote for. But I say, I will encourage you to exercise that right. Please. It means something. So that's all I had to say tonight. I'm glad that I was given this opportunity by Greg. And, I, and I'm thankful to see the brothers because it's been a while since I've seen it. We've all been quarantined. We've been doing our best, what? To follow the law. Amen. Amen. Right? This, you know, the, 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 uh, the separated, the shelter in place. So God is good. And yes, we're going to come out of this. And we're going to be better than when we was when we went in. Amen. You know, just stay faithful. Stay humble. Stay in the spirit, prayed up, and I'm telling you, we all have been tested during this time. On one level or another. Man, I never spend this much time around my wife. I, I mean, we won't give a chance to miss each other, man. I mean, just, you know, we dead. Amen. We just Tell here. the truth, brother. You know what I mean? Man, we just here. Tw almost 24 7 we here. Right? But again, man, everything is being tried, man. They tell him, the police say, man, the, the, the domestic calls went through the roof. Hey, we. Who are walking in life, man, we got to be ready to minister. That's right. That's right. We got to be ready, man. <laughs> and we all, man, trust me, it's all a test. But God is good. And I know, he told me, he said, man, and I'll bring you through before. I'll bring you through this time. Amen. 
And that's all I, 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 I trust in him. And I'm still here, and we all are still here. Amen? Amen. 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 That was Brother Calvin Levy. Amen. With a good word. Amen. And listen, that, America's going to be great. America's going to be great when they colonize with heaven's culture. Amen. Amen. See, heaven is our homeland, but earth is our assignment. And our assignment is to bring the culture of heaven to earth. To bring the culture of heaven to America. Praise the Lord. So we're excited about that. Uh, the next minister is coming is Minister Jonathan. He's going to come and share his heart. And uh, I'm excited about what God is doing in this ministry. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Good evening. Uh, good evening, uh, uh, America. Good evening, um, uh, viewers. Uh, welcome to the uh, Behold the Land Ministry, and um, my name is the Minister Jonathan McElvin. I'm happy to be here today. Uh, thank God for the assignment that he has assigned us with today. And um, I'm not going to be with you long, but I'm talking to get myself loose, because I have so much to say, and I'm only allowing the Spirit of the Lord to say what's necessary. Praise God. One of the greatest things I'm finding, even going into this, this uh, quarantine uh, mode was, was, was making sure that we did what was necessary for the time that we was given. It was so necessary for us to, as the Bible say, redeem the time. And we redeem the time going into this thing. Guess uh -huh. what? While we were in it, while we are in it, guess yeah. what? It's necessary for that to remain. Uh -huh. And now the scripture I like to read um, it comes from Ecclesiastes, chapter, uh, chapter 3, verse 11. Let's start at verse 10. I have seen the travail which God has given the Son of Man to be exercised in it. He had made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he set the world in their hearts. So that no man can find out the work that God make it from the beginning. So that no, no one, no man can find out the work that God make it from the beginning to the end. I know that there is no good thing in them, but for man to rejoice and to do good in his life. Praise God. Amen. And I'm going to say it again. Redeem your time. Okay. It's necessary for you to redeem it. You know what COVID-19 did? Gave me a vacation. <laughs> I'm in vacation mode because, number one, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying time with the woman that I love. And the fact that I needed to rest only proved that God, thank you for thinking about me. But it was necessary for COVID-19 to come. Because I saw this not as, as a troublesome for the, for the church, but for the world. But you know how God works. Unless he can strike everything, unless he can strike the right person, sometimes he got to hit the wrong person to get to the right person. All right. You understand? Because the world in itself has to see exactly who it is that we're serving. They don't want to hear what we're saying. They want to see what we're doing. Well, praise God. And if I tell the world, hey, guess what? Praise God, the Lord going to bring us through this. They're not, actually, they're not literally concerned about what I'm saying. They're more concerned about why I said it. Come on. If I say the Lord is going to bring me through this without any problems, guess what? And they see every day that the joy of the Lord is continuing to strengthen me, guess what? Guess what? That's what makes them concerned. How can you rejoice in time of trouble? Mm -hmm. Why? Because my life is in Christ and, and on, my man. life is in, my spirit yes, is in Christ and my life is hid in him. Mm -hmm. I have no other choice. Guess what? Let me tell you something about this dead man here. And I call myself a dead man because every day I purpose to die. Okay. Die from what? Die from the necessary thing that caused my time to be held back, okay. to cause my time to be frozen, to cause my delays from God to be to be postponed. Say, so how can you do that? He said, I said, you know what? 
Before COVID-19, I had time to do everything under the sun, but it wasn't necessary for me to do those things under the sun. Mm -hmm. And God said, guess what? I got to slow you down. I got to slow you down simply because you're doing what's necessary. You think you're doing what's necessary for you, for me, but you're doing what's necessary for you. Well, he said, I want to, that's, that's, that, he said, I'm, you are led by my spirit. Now you are being led by your own influence. I said, okay, Lord, I repent. So as a result, I'm learning now in the time that I has been given. I'll say again, the time that I has been given, because even in the book of Ecclesiastes, the earlier part, the Lord said there's a time for everything under the sun. Yes, Lord. Yes, and the, Lord. the, the, one, the very thing we want to do is major in the minor time, take mm -hmm. the necessary time to do that is what, what is unnecessary and what is necessary we put, we put, put to the side. I refuse to take the time that the Lord has given me and, and, and waste it doing something I want to do. On, things man. that are not necessary. So what am I going to do as a, as, 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 as a result of me not wasting God's time and, 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 and not wasting my time? Mm -hmm. The Bible said those that are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. Mm -hmm. So if I'm going to be led by the Spirit, I'm going to wake up every morning or air all throughout the course of the day and say, Lord, what it is that you would have me to do? What must I say that I might not only impact my life, impact my wife's life, impact my children's life, guess what, and all those that, that are connected to me? Because I got an assignment for each day. Because the Bible said in, 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 in Matthew, he said, give us this day our daily bread. Why did he say that? Guess what? There is only a portion of a day that is that is supposed to be dedicated for you. And there's a portion of the day that is dedicated to him. But the things that he wants is for to make sure all that he give you to do, you fulfill it. Praise God. And this is what we are coming to. Not doing what is necessary, but doing the things that are necessary to God. Praise God. Hallelujah. I refuse to be like a oozer, put my hand on something that is godly, even because I'm so it's necessary for me to, 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 to I'm, is, I'm mandated to do the things of God. Guess what? If the Lord said don't do it, guess what? It ain't going to be done. That's why he said there's a time for everything under the sun. And unless we learn to do the things that are regulated to us in the time that he's supposed to we're supposed to do it, guess what? We're working out of a regulated season. It's almost like putting on a, on, on a double-breasted suit with a mink coat in the wintertime. It, you know, what sense does that make? The sun is out. You understand? And you got on a meat stove. You understand? And, and, and guess what? He didn't just concern himself with time. He concerned himself with season. See, if you don't know what time it is, you ain't going to know how to operate in the season that he give you during that time. So, okay. All right. Now, we're in the winter time. So, 